Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushai, Ba'ashem Arakak Wadash, and double honors to the outer apostles of the Great Millstone that have taught me what I know through the Spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushai, which is indeed the Holy Spirit, Wa'arakak Wadash, and Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushai, Brakatham, to the overall elect, who is 144,000, and including the one third in this, your brother Laban. And um, I want to respond to this video of uh, Vocab Malone, Ephesians 2 defeat Israelites on the corner. So, what I want to do is, is I want to begin by reading Ephesians 2 in verse 13. Actually, no, let's go up a couple of verses here. Ephesians 2 and verse 12, right? That at that time ye were without the anointed, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And why were these people aliens? Well, verse 11 tells you, as I should have read anyway. But I'll read it. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So what does this mean? Meaning that these people which were known as Gentiles in the New Testament were at once upon a time the circumcision but became the uncircumcision what does the uncircumcision represents that they were fashioned after the ways of the people that conquered them such as the greeks if you go into the, the history of antiochus epiphanes in the book of maccabees that very well explains to you what happened to those people which in here is called the Gentiles, which are Israelites, okay? They became Gentiles because their ancestors going all the way back to that time period gave in to the customs of the heathen. So throughout the ages, these people were considered aliens, in other words, strangers to those that kept the customs. And those that kept the customs looked at these people as, again, strangers. That's that group that 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 uh, sold out to the heathen. All right. So when we look up the, these key words over here. Ye were without Christ, right? Being aliens. Now, let's look up this word alien for a minute. This is very easy to alienate to estrange to be shut out oh 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 to be shut out from one's fellowship and intimacy so to be shut out of one's fellowship you would have to have been part of the fellowship this is the scholars telling you this i'm not i didn't make this up okay no one's made this up <laughs> This is what the scholars are saying. Strong definition. Right. I've already made the point quite clear. To be shut out from one's fellowship and intimacy. It doesn't really speak on anything much on the strong's death. So let's continue to read on, shall we? Right? Ephesians 2 and verse 13. But now in the anointed, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of the anointed. So how are these people made nigh by the blood of the anointed? This is a very key point that is being overlooked over here. <laughs> All right? This is king. Like, we got to pay attention to this. By now in the anointed, Yahweh Shai, he who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of the anointed. 
So why were they made nigh by the blood of the anointed? Because, let's go and read. John 11 and verse 51. Uh oh. John 11 and 49. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us. Let's look up this word expedient. <laughs> expedient. In the Greek, sum ferro. If I'm correct. Strong's G 4851. Sum ferro. Sum ferro. Which means to bear together all at the same time to carry with others to collect or contribute in order to help. To help be profitable, be expedient. So it was expedient. It was to being collected. Or let's just say, let me go back and um, read the definition so I can find a better word. It was to be profitable, right? It was to be profitable for us. Again, let's read it. Let's read it to how, how it how it is seen over here. John um eleven and, and fifty one, right? This spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yahawashai should die for that nation and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one, the children of the most high that were scattered abroad. Now, since that we've done got done reading that, let's connect the dots, shall we, with James what is it? Uh, I haven't read the scripture in a long time. James 1 and 1, I believe it is, right? James 1 and 1. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahawashai, the anointed, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So that's who the Lord died for. So those Gentiles... That, that were considered outcasts from, from the uh, the commonwealth were a part of that. One with this again. Verse 13. By now in the anointed, Yahushai, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of the anointed. So we would be lying if we were to say that all nations can now be made near towards the children of Israel because guess what as I just read to you in John 11 and 51 as the high priest Caiaphas said that it was expedient for that man to die that one man that he should die for the people and that that whole nation not nations and that that whole nation perish not so now let's read another witness Acts 5 and uh, verse 28. In verse um, 30. Let's begin by reading verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. And the God of our fathers, the Most High of our fathers, raised up Yahawashai, whom ye slew and hanged on the tree. In him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. So there's another witness. Witness number three, Romans 9. And let's begin by reading uh, verse one. So this is the Apostle Paul speaking on how he wished that he can... Uh, as it reads, right, I say the truth and the anointed and I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from the anointed for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So he wished he, he would have he went through the same thing. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory? 
and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of the most high and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom is con as concerning the flesh. What flesh? The Israelites. Christ came or Yahweh Shai came who is over all for the most high blessed forever. Amen. So that is the flesh that he died for. Acts 5 and uh, 31 tells you that. John 11 and 51. And, and as well as this witness is over here. Okay. If there be a case and it be established by two or three witnesses, let the case be established as true. So we have three witnesses of scripture that solidifies that our point of view is sound and that the point of view of vocab alone, he is a liar. Now, let's go back to Ephesians 2 and verse 14 now, since that we've, we've, we've got done with this. <laughs> For he is our peace who have made both one. And have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Another word, key word, partition. Let's read this again. For he is our peace. Who is the our peace? The peace for Israel. Who have made both one. Because they were one before. And have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. That's why in the book of Galatians chapter 3 and verse 24 says that there's neither a difference between Jew nor Greek. Why was there no difference? Because they were all coming from the same genus, the same race. And that same race is that they were all Israelites. The only difference was is that one were outcasted from the commonwealth and the one stayed within the commonwealth. That's the only difference. But when it comes to nationality, they were all the same. So the anointed one, when he died on the cross for us, even the phone had to chime in on that. When the, when the Messiah died on the cross for our sins, especially in this case, these people, which are known as the Gentiles in the New Testament, what that did is destroyed that wall of partition between those two groups. And brought them together. By them believing in Yahweh Shai. Through faith. Verse 15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Ah, another word. Enmity, which is in relation to partition. Let's look up this word enmity. Hostility. This is the strongest death. Hostility by implication, reason for opposition, enmity, hatred. So that's what was going on at the time. There was an enmity between the two groups of Israelites. Okay, well, actually, I didn't have to look up that word. I'm just a little bit excited. That wasn't even a word I didn't have to look into. Um, even the law of the commandments contained in the ordinance. For to make in himself of two, one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto the Most High in one body by the cross, having slain their enmity thereby. So what does the word reconcile mean? Meaning to be brought back to the same assembly or the same body. The re-meaning back and counsel from the, uh, the Latin concilium, meaning with assembly. Okay, so when we look at the atom on here. It tells you that right over here. Council. Con. Uh, which which is con we know is with. And collide together. So when you put it all together, it's concilium or consul in old English in ecclesiastical assembly. Right. So really originating from the Latin. Concilium, which means convocation or assembly. But I would rather say it this way with assembly from the word con meaning with, and cilium meaning assembly. So it just simply means with an assembly. So, in order for you to be reconciled, you would have to have been a part of that assembly before to be brought back to it again. That's what makes sense. 
Not with this demonic, let me say correctly, not with this demonically possessed individual saying on the left hand side. Because this guy's lying. All right. And this is the reason why um, a lot of us didn't want to fuck with this guy because this individual is disingenuous. And basically what this devil does is he'll use what we said and try to flip it around for his for his own um, purpose so that he can lie and convey a point that we didn't convey. To try to substantiate his lie, because it's just lies what he's telling. You know, so that's all I got to say right there, man, Um, is this is very simple. This is not easy. Excuse me. This is very easy. It's not hard. So let's continue to read on. Once again, and that he might reconcile. And by the way, let's look into the Greek. Let's look at this word in the Greek. Apokatalaso, if I'm correct. <laughs> My Greek ain't that good, man. Okay, I'm correct. Apokatalaso. I just about got it wrong. To reconcile completely. To reconcile back again. Bring back a former state of harmony. There it is. This is even more powerful to the point. Bring back a former state of harmony because they were already in harmony before. Okay? So when the Messiah came on the scene, he brought that harmony back. This is why the, the Messiah is also known as Shiloh. What does Shiloh mean? Mean peace. Okay? He came to bring peace towards the Israelite foreigners, which are, were known as Gentiles, and the Israelites that were a part of the commonwealth, and also bringing peace between the Israelites and the Heavenly Father. That was the purpose of the dying of the cross of the sacrificial lamb, who Yahweh Shai was. All right? So, again, very simple. And the reason why it's very simple for us, because we're telling it, like it should be told. And basically the Bible is our book. The Bible isn't for you devils. That's why you don't understand it as it is written. Let me read one final scripture and I'm out of here. Uh, uh, let's go to the blue letter. Uh, Daniel's. Daniel's chapter 12. And. Verse. Ten. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So that's the point. None of the wicked shall understand. And that's why he's doing what he's doing. Okay? Because he's in the business of lying. So when it comes to him actually having to get the understanding, his mind can't can't get the understanding because he's basically the wicked and he's a liar. He's been lying so much so now that he, he doesn't get it. Even if he wanted to get it, he can't get it. This guy's been on our case for 12 years. And you mean to tell me you don't understand what we're talking about as of yet? Come on, man. So the Lord blocked him from understanding this. He's addicted to the light, but can't get the light. So sad. Anyway, I'm out. Shalom.